playing around that doesn't pair up necessarily really well with Lee Sin, but it is still up and available as an opportunity. Ooh, Carla too. So that would be essentially a double flex. We still wouldn't really know who's going mid and who's going bomb lane. I mean, come on. I would assume it's Nico in the mid lane <laughs> at this point. But again, double range spot lane for AL makes it a little bit more difficult for Mako during this landing phase on the Renata. And now, finally, we'll see what Tien is going to bring to the table. You mentioned the Diego open and available. We've seen him hover the Zin's out already. This would be a different look to Sejuani in the jungle, but no. you've got a Renekton up top to work with. Did you see that engage? Not a fan. Oh, my face was the same as TN's right there. He's like, <sighs> guess I got, guess I got to do it for the team. You he's, know, three six nine did in game one. He's doing the Yankos yeah. on Sejuani GT. Yeah. You know what? Three six nine had to take one of the team in game one, playing the Cassante. Now it has to be that Sejuani. However, that gives me a lot of confidence that they do want to play for the Renekton. They do want to play towards the top side of the map, try and get that Renekton ahead. We mentioned how Harry was so impactful uh, when it came when it came down to these team fights, where the Renekton had one and two items, and how when he pinned down enemy AD carry, they pretty much melted in his hand. So potentially playing through sixty nine could very well be a very viable option. However. However, I raise you the Uno Reverse, which says this is an LPL Kalista Renata lane. We don't care what we're playing into. We're going to shove in the wave and we're going to try to tower dive you and fight you 1v1. Now, it's not going to be the easiest task into Varus and Nico that have a bunch of wave clear among them, but it's still pretty darn doable because this is Jackie Loves Kalista. It certainly is. We'll see how the 2v2 down in that bottom side goes. It's always fun to watch when Jackie Love and Mako have an aggressive matchup, but Hope and Kale, plenty of presence in that bottom side themselves. A lot of wave clear available to them, so we'll see if they can gain control of that lane. I'm looking towards that top side though. Like you said, Renekton, Sejuani, a lot of ability to play through 369 here for top esports, but also the Sejuani Ari, that pick combo, that combination of the ult from Sejuani, the charm from Ari, you take a misstep here. Unless you're Cassante on the side of AL, you're gonna be obliterated. Okay, may I say, I actually hate Aris Tsuani so much. This is the easiest Mercs of Shanks' life right here. You get your Mercs, you play a little bit more freely in lane, you've got the movement speed through your E. If you do get chunked down, RW is your friend, you get to heal a little bit much. Oh, my bad, sorry guys. <laughs> that's okay that's okay <laughs> but yeah you're right like shanks can get real i've got too passionate you know about my hate of sensuani plus harry together <laughs> uh, we are seeing the nico go into that bottom lane as well it is shanks on the uh karma setting up for croco Ooh. to have that power coming out of the jungle cream spots this invade though and we'll be able to walk over to the rest of his team al what are they oh, going to look love for this here for i love this for al splitting the map in half they know what Jackie Love and Mako can do onto a pick like Renata Kalista. So they're making sure of the get-go that their jungler is going to be stuck towards the top side of the map, not having the assistance right there of Tian in the early stages of the game. Cream has to run straight into that mid lane, doesn't have time to be nuisance onto Croco. And great late early game invade right here from AO. Really good stuff from them. It feels like they have had the answers so far. To whatever top esports has tried to throw their way. I feel like Tabe and the gang working for the paychecks here. This feels like a very well drilled early game from AL. They knew exactly what they were going to do at this level one and now splitting the map to try and force some pressure. Shanks, good trade there in the mid lane onto Cream as well. Cream on one of his signature picks. This is one of the majors that even when he was an assassin player, even when Ari built the Everfrost and wasn't really an assassin anymore. This was the mage that Green was still very happy and very comfortable playing. Is Jackie Love and Mako going to try and force Croco out of the jungle here? Gromp will reset and Tien moves down. So no interest in this vertical jungling nonsense from the side of top esports. They want things to be a little bit more normal. Tien moves in. Both junglers However stood on a ward looking at each other menacingly. I feel like AL have the upper hand right here. Both their bot laners are level two. Tien can no walk up to take this Gromp because the second he does, Cow is gonna move up, Croco is still there, and he knows Jackie Love and Mako are only level one. They're literally smite fighting the Gromp right now. That will most likely give Tien his level three. 
Oh, he's not even going to smite I've done my math correctly. It. Able Ooh, to get it. That's, I've done, okay. That's level I've three. done my math correctly. Importantly as well, Jackie Lover Maker found a window there where the third or the fourth wave, sorry, was arriving in the bottom lane. So it held this wave here. Hope couldn't actually move. So even with the level advantage, just the move advantage for top esports because the wave wasn't really crashable. Jackie Lover able to get in here. <laughs> what is going on? And soak up as many minions as possible. It's still massively down in CS though. Look at the CS advantage for Hope so far. Tien moves in. Remember, he kept his smite and actually the flail gets himself the crab. Rooted up. Do they have the damage to finish this one off? Stun comes on through onto Croco. Cream moving in to try and protect his jungler and stands to body no way. Puck. Keeps Tien alive. No way. No way Tien gets out alive from this. He pushes in for a scuttle crab. He pushes into the river for Skullcrab. He has no bot lane prio. He knows Karma is in this brush. <laughs> Not only does he get in, but he gets out of it. That was some blubber level play right there. That was some blubber level love for Ooh. Scuttlecrabs <laughs> right there from Tian. Nice, taking the flash away from Kyle as well. And Tian's actually gonna be double crabbing Croco out of this play alone. Nice stuff right there from Tian. Again, he does lose his flash. In the process, he has to be a little bit more careful, especially on his pre-6 yeah. skirmishes into that but Lee Sin, Karma, and Cassante. However, he did work. He has put him 12 CS up. That's four camps. Yeah, and you can see that Croco still has Three camps. so many camps up on his side of the map. His, I mean, Croco is literally just taking his fourth camp of the game. Two of them were on Tien's side of the map. So Croco still has a lot to get through, but... Tien's already finished clearing that. He can go for a reset and then get back out onto the map. So Tien, a little bit ahead in terms of tempo this game. We'll, we'll see if he can find his way into a lane instead. But Croco, not even going to go and clear his bottom side. You know, red buff, Krug's still been untouched by Croco. He's going for the gross. And I feel like this might be a little bit greedy right here from Croco. Because every time you do a neutral objective, you do tend to fall behind in terms of clear, and we did mention that Tien had already cleared a lot more than Croco had done before, so he's on his way to seek super fast from the side of Tien. It also frees you from having any jobs, right? You mentioned the entire bot side from Croco is still up and available. One Gromp remains right here for Tien, and then he'll have no jobs on the map, which means that your lanes are gonna have to start respecting the fact that the Juan is currently jobless on the map. You'll see Tien is actually sprinting that bot side of the map. Cream is hovering as well. The second the respect move under the tower comes from AL, they're gonna pull up onto that river and it will give them that dragon. Or at least for yep. now, AL need to push up their waves. Croco is nowhere near. I mean, bot prio alone gives them a way into this Drake. It feels like AL want to contest for this one. Rend is available, so it should be the Drake taken a minimum by Top Esports. And now a charm onto Hope as well as Cream dives in for more. Kale trying to threaten as Mako. Low on HP. Ignites Shanks. He's like, okay, if I'm going to go down, I'm going to set you on fire first. But Jackie Love is low. Hope survived the bailout. Not enough. And now Cream caught as well. Sure, you got the Drake top, but at what cost? Wow. AL with another fantastic skirmish towards the bot side of the map. Take three with them. Tian is trying to fight for his solo Grom. Uh, he's winning. In the jungle, uh, he's, he's winning. Won the uh, Tien is solo killing Gronko's Lee Sin and Sijuani. What is going on, Munch? I don't know. What? That is exactly the fiesta I signed up for. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, top esports, major disrespect. They knew that Croco was going to be on the top side of the map, potentially clearing towards his bot side, which means they start the dragon. But then Karma walks down, and as you can see, Cream is level 6, but his support is level 4, and he said he carries level 5, and they're all so miscoordinated. Mako gets caught up on the top side of the map, kind of walk through the Karma. Then they don't end up going for hope, even though Cream engaged on him. Then Jack and Love overextends, trying to get a kill while Cream is out. And it gives me glimpses of what happened in game number one months, where Everyone from Tess wanted to fight, but nobody was on the same page in terms of them all pressing their buttons on the same target all at once. And this has cost them three kills, <laughs> one dragon, and uh, I guess one casualty on a Lee Sin. Yeah, I mean... He, he is kind of blind, so in his defense, maybe he didn't see the Sizuani right there. Yeah, I feel like you can hear that giant Poro, though. I don't know, bit of a weird one from Croco at the end of the play. A lot of gold given over to Tien, who is 
massively ahead in the jungle at this point. Grabs himself two grubs as well. And the Drake was taken by Top Esports, but AL, they've got a gold lead. Croco taking a lot of gold in that fight, but honestly, the Top Esports, again, these early game plays feel really uncoordinated. It feels like they didn't actually realize AL were able to contest. Oh, Harry. Oh, no. The snipe? He's in bad uh, trouble, but actually Croco's moved up to the play as well. Cream ulting over to be a part of this one and finishes the job. Charm comes on through. Uh, TN, I don't know what the hell that ult was, but Cream trying to finish the job. Croco gets out. A mega whiff <laughs> coming out from TN. However, it still does net them a kill right here. Very nice run from Cream really quickly. Caught Shanks on the research right there. Roamed real quickly towards the top side of the map. They need to get something going on the map. I think they're using the tactic that AL used uh, in game number one. Oh, very nice. Uh, ult right there from Jack. Love to save his support. Yeah, they're using the tactic that AL used on them from game number one. They're like, okay, well, our bot lane's screwed. So let's play towards top lane. Get Ari and Renekton ahead, and then we can start playing for these team fights. However, your Kalista is never going to reach the levels of scaling that non-hit Varus did in the previous game, so you're still going to have to somehow get Jackie Love involved in these kills. Tien still ahead in the jungle here. 20 CS lead right now as Croco moves in with Shanks to try and deny that fact further. Tien dips out, tries to steal the wolf with the flail, but Croco will be able to take that one. And off the back of the fact that Jangelov is in the base, um, AL should be able to take the Gromp as well, push a wave in in the bottom side, and maybe even get a third plate for themselves. Maybe actually, listen, is blind. That Q did not hit. The Gromp was not moving, I swear. <laughs> Munch. The Gromp was absolutely not moving. Back on the map, however, I feel like it's now personal for Croco, you know? He gets solo killed by Tien in Tien's jungle, and every single time you have so much priority through your bot side of the map. The Karma is perma pushing. Your Varus plus Nico are perma shoving. And Tian once again has tried to find a way to get his team somehow ahead. It is going to be through the top side of the map. Five tower platings. Five tower platings have gone into 369's Renekton. And yeah. if I've ever believed in any top laner I'm carrying any team through, it would be probably one the shy and then two. 369 for sure, <laughs> alongside I mean, Bing. I trust, so. the, I trust 369 way more than I trust the Shy. Are you <laughs> kidding me? <laughs> like the See, shy. I, had a, I had a Bing in there as well. Come on. He's famous for uh, completely sprinting after taking a massive lead. Anyway, uh, <laughs> enough about that, though. But 369, like you say, he's getting a lot of gold into his pocket, but also spending it in damage he's got that eclipse for himself so that renekton it may look like a bruiser it may look like a tank it's not it's an assassin right now in terms of that first item so hope and shanks both got to be a little bit nervous and also the fact that i feel like people often forget renekton is a shield breaker as well so even shanks who can put a big shield on himself renekton w does just remove those shields so still has massive potential damage if he can get onto that back line Huge thing that happened in the bottom as well. Hope throws his chain of corruption onto Jackie Love. I love the fact that he keeps throwing that R onto Jackie Love, trying to potentially bait an early cleanse. Oh. However, he's going to be a dragon. 369 has sneaked in. That's the damage we were talking about. The kick comes through, but Cream is there. No Dark okay, Seal, unfortunately, but still a kill from the solo laners. Croco versus Croco. Who wins? Uh, I think it's got to be Croco at this point. Tien there. Yep. Tien's ultimate is available, but Shanks should definitely be safe in that scenario based on the first ult we saw this game. As uh, We've had a couple of whiffs from both junglers, honestly, but I'd say Tien, aside from that Sijuani, oh, that's been looking pretty good so far. Grubs up once again. Two picked up out the first three for top esports. And with the tower destroyed already in the top lane, they can move in to try and get some more as well. Oh, however, look at the rotation. Oh. You've got Cream all the way back in base. Tian, you need to get out. The hostile takeover is huge from Mako. It saves Tien's life. He got one grub, but Croco can move in and finish the other two. So three for three. Great contest from AL. Uh, absolutely. And honestly, for Tien right there, he's honestly lucky to get out. Because if you look at the rotation, they put Harry all the way down in bot lane with TP available if a fight breaks out. And they bring Hope, who right now has the ghost plate. He is ahead on that Varus into that mid lane to take the fight towards the Void Grubs. And you had Cream 
needing to reset. Also, 369 wasn't quite there. It didn't have the ultimate. So there were a lot of components for top esports that were missing. TM, sneak, TM sneaks in, steals one away, sneaks out. It was a pretty good uh, sneaky play right there by TN. And overall, the map is looking pretty healthy. However, I think it's all going to come down to 40 seconds from now. You do have a Rift Herald spawning. You do have it on the top side of the map. 369 has been absolutely monstrous this game. And honestly, cannot take away from Tian as well. The solo kill, the jungle, the fact that he's kept himself up. Two camps up right now for the jungle of top esports. Knights Val available as well. Another chain of corruption. Instantly taking the class off of Jackal. But that's exactly what you want. Hope has been throwing this out every single time, trying to bait Jackalov's cleanse, which means that Jackalov walking into the next fight might be problematic for him. <laughs> yeah, tough for Jackalov there. A lot of pressure in the mid lane. And uh, we'll be able to survive the potential all in, but won't uh, walk away healthy. Actually had to reset off the back of that one. Still not quite finished his first item. This lethality virus as well for Hope, so a lot of presence when it comes to these neutral objectives. Cream kicked against the wall and almost one shot, but no! one shot importantly and now cream can move further into the play got a reset Ooh. man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every single time every single time listen you miss all the shots all the shots you don't take okay man you miss all Dian the shots you do take you can see Ed, yeah <laughs> jesus uh jackie loves oh, no, jackie. trouble he doesn't have that cleanse does have flash available might just have to blast that one out pop blossom coming through Good reactions from Jackalove. Knew that there was a real chance of that coming. And the Blast Gun will get him out to safety. So, flash for flash between Kale and Jackie. But again, I think this oh, is pretty no. huge. 369 right here. I think they're preparing a dive. Tian has not left bot lane. There is no ultimate. Harry might have to pull back from this oh, okay. situation right here. And 369 yet again demolishing another tower. This Renekton is so strong right now. About 30 CS up on the Renekton. Very close to the second item, which is going to be most likely a Black Cleaver gonna help a little bit Jackalov with the damage department right there and honestly I feel like top esports are just pulling an AL from the first game they're like okay our bot lane screwed play top side it's worked so far two one and one onto cream one and a half items on this Ari 369 with full tire plate it's in the top lane two towers in his name as well must be super super close to his second item completion as well and cream he's looking he knows Shanks is around no tower there, remember. So Shanks has to just completely back away. Tien in the area. Mako and Tien have been joined. In the oh, no, Mako! No! Oh, no! Surely not! Ult comes in from Cream to try and follow up, but cannot return enough I... damage. I have questions. I have so many questions. Clearly, Mako walked up there because he wanted to set down some vision so that Cream can push a little bit more freely. However... In 30 seconds, there's a dragon spawning on the bot side of the map. Your team already has two of them. How about you did stop side completely? You play for bot vision control since 369 is also on the bot side with you. And you don't face check a quadrant that you have absolutely no idea who's hiding inside. Yeah, a bit of an awkward one, to say the very least, there from Mako. And uh, Herald going to be slammed in the mid lane as well. That will take a tier one, and not only that, it will take mid control just as Drake spawns as well. AL move into that bot river, TP from Cream to make sure that vision isn't completely lost from the side of top esports. Cream actually blast coning in to contend any kind of presence in this river. Top esports, they want this Drake and they want it bad. Shanks has TP, but I don't think AL are contesting. This will be so point now for top esports. They're pinging the top side of the map, they're trying to get a little bit more gold into the team right here and they knew that they didn't necessarily have the setup they don't have the vision al were playing primarily towards the top side of the map so shanks is going to push it another wave try to take that tower croc is going to join him as well to make sure that this tower that they gave up the dragon for ends up going down and they're going to trade structure on the map for neutral objective again gold pretty much dead even this time around, 369 is going to go back to base. He's most likely going to have his Black Cleaver right here. And again, no objectives on the map right here. It could be literally both teams just sitting in mid lane and trying no. to push out the waves for a little bit of vision control until somebody missteps. And uh, we are exactly <laughs> even in gold. 30.5 thousand on either side for a second there. Now 30.6. 
This is about as close as it could get. Top Esports having those Drakes as their advantage. Three Grubs and two Towers apiece. Oh, 369. 369. Either could be in trouble or could be making a sick flank play. Hard to say. Did he get spotted there? I don't know if Kale saw him. No, no, no. Okay, 369 goes in. 1v3 to start the play off here. He's not that tanky. Remember, he went Eclipse first item. Ooh. You cannot sit in three people for that long. I, I don't know. I'm baffled, honestly, Munch. I'm baffled. He must we have thought about there was only how... two there or something. We, we, we always keep talking about how clean Tess is, how they'll take the first tower. They did take the first tower. However, the coordination this series has been completely off. 369 right there did not get spotted walking out of the, of the pixel brush. He was actually pretty concealed by Fog of War, I'm pretty sure. Oh, oh, just about, they just see about, they did. Just about, they did see him. He walks in, so he tries didn't to get Kale off the shines. Around, yeah. He didn't know that Nico was around and ends up going down, shut down to Kroko, who has been actually quite starving this game. Dian has been ahead in this matchup the entire time on the Setsuani. And 369 giving his shutdown just like that must really hurt because you give up so much tempo on the map, which is especially since. There's not any neutral objective you want to fight over. Having that pressure on the map is huge. So not only losing your tower, but taking down the top lane as well gives a lot of freedom, the sort of AL, to take some control over on the map. And you'll see all the wards on the bot side of the map from AL pretty much tell you the story. So lead for AL. Only a thousand gold. They know what's going on, though. They know someone's in that brush. That's the nice thing about Nico too. You got those clones to face check brushes for you can help you get control in the jungle but top esports oh, ultimately going to be used there by um. hope that's quite a big cooldown to use shanks taking a huge chunk tien has gone in to try and get damage down the aftershock keeps him alive for a bit and croco forced to flash back away but no the ignite finishes the job cream dashing away from this one croco kicks him against the wall of the pop blossom follows it as well no bail you as Croco gets a double and it's just as Baron spawns. AL are gonna start the Baron as well. Very low HP bars, but the East TP onto Shanks. 369 is coming in. Renekton is massive and Shanks is not gonna get allowed to TP back. Oh, Super boy. low HP bars. This feels tense. 369 has to carry this one. Jackie Love in the play as well. Trying to get damage onto Harry, but he's just so tanky already. Chunk out from Shanks. 6k on the Baron here. Health bars are pretty low for AL, and honestly, I don't know if AL wants to commit to this play anymore. 369 starts things off, and Harry goes in to try and get his team out. Shanks is on the wrong side of the map, though, and there's no tower in that top lane. He's probably going to fall, too. That's a double for Jackie, and once again, top side find themselves back in the game. Oh, my God, the bounce back right here. The HP bars were too low for AL. Shanks is not allowed to reset, which means he's sitting around with super low HP, cannot participate in the fight. You see that Kel is the same thing, and Chain of Correction goes in here, and I'm I'm, I'm wondering what for, because Tien is super tanky. Tien will very crucially miss his R right here. Oof, that goes super wide. Cream dashes in to try and follow up on that old, but he actually missed. So Cream couldn't capitalize onto anything. The UCF fantastic engage all coming in from Cal to stop both of them dead in their tracks. Jekyllov will pull out his support. But that will be all she wrote. And you'll see 369 is going to push the wave down bot lane and actually become a threat right here. Cal on the right side of your screen, super low on HP. Shank, super low on HP. Crocker has to tank the Baron, super low on HP. Hope has no mana. And he's also tanking the Baron, has to flash out of the back of the pit. And by oh. that time, Tien is back. It's a oh. kick, it's a kick. I think that's Jackie Love down. I'm not sure of the setup. It's two for AL. Cream now looking for a charm as well. Bit of damage out, but AL, what a, what a fight. What a moment. Crocker with a great kick now. Looking for 369 as well. Bit of damage returned, but the Honey Fruit will set it up. And Soul denied. That's a huge pick right here from AL denying the Soul. As you mentioned, also slowing down the Baron so crucially imagine if that was baron plus soul from the side of top esports that be able to take over your entire map al have been playing so aggressive this series you know 
there is a case of nameplates on nameplates off thing. You know, you're playing against triple world champions on the set of top esports. AL have played with no freaking fear the whole time. Luca Croco gets the Q onto Jackie Love, the W into flat uh, into R on the back to throw Jackie Love into literally yeah. the mouth of the sharks and AL completely demolish Croco. top esports is bot lane. Croco looks good today, but not as good as 369. This time he can 1v3. Takes a kill for himself. Look at the sustain. He's going to get a second. Oh, Kale Ooh. just about lives through it. My God, 369. He is taking matters into his own scaly hands. What's this for, though? What's this for? We see all of these skirmishes going down. The Ten of Corruption going to go down again. They're looking for Mako. At least still has his, her ult. But again, there's so many skirmishes going down. It's sort of like a display of how strong is 369. And we get it, he's really, really strong. But he keeps end up going down in scenarios where he's one versus X without a singular teammate on side. However, with a little bit of Baron that they have on the set of top issues, they're trying. Aye, not quite there from Kale. Nice that mid lane tower. Nice try. Him and Croco both trying to brute force and engage. It won't work out for them. Baron only got 15 seconds on it, and Top Esports not even able to finish this mid lane tower. I don't know, with 10 seconds, maybe this wave will get in in time. I don't think it'll matter. I think they can pretty much just take this tower regardless of the Baron buff, but you want it for the Baron power play, guys. There we go. There you go. Just there it is. Just it higher as the, uh, as the Baron types out. So, yeah, ultimately, not the most impactful Baron we've ever seen from Top Esports is... Uh, I mean, Shanks just gets 100 to 0 Yeah, it's kind of huge right there from 369 that he does find the Karma, but then he gets kicked way too far back into the jungle, and you see that Tien is like, you know what, buddy? You're kind of alone. I kind of follow you in there. Kalista is all the way in the mid lane. Ari is all the way down the bot side of the map. No one is TPing into your favor, so it was a one-for-one -one trade overall. Losing your Renekton always hurts because he is your one threat over in the side lane. He is your one yeah. man that's putting up, down the pressure on the map. So again, back to back, losing 369 on the map has really halted the progression that you really want to be seeing from top esports right here. Especially since they have that trio of death, the Ari, the Satuani, yeah. the, the Renekton. I don't quite feel that the Renekton has gotten fed enough or ahead enough in this oh. particular game to be such a huge, huge, huge threat. I, I, there are a I lot of shields coming in from Karma, you know, and, and kicks from Lee Sin. It's going to be so difficult to get onto Hope. I think that's part of the problem as well, is that 369 feels like he has to carry in this mid game because you've got this Callista composition again that didn't work out in the late game for them last time around. Bit of damage on the bottom side, Tien forced to flash away here as the siege begins. But yeah, compositionally, you like what AL are bringing later on into the game. That said, Cream will still do a lot of damage. Mako. I am so confused. Oh, hang on. Mako's in trouble here. He stepped too far forwards. There's a flank from the top side. I think they're going to get away. Croco. Croco spotted now on the Scryer's Bloom. Top Esports walk away with their lives. Look at your mid-wave, Top Esports. Look at your mid-wave. Lane assignment. Back to school. Back to school. Lane assignment. Push in that mid lane wave. They're piling up as five on the bolt side of the map. There is nothing on the bot side of the map but a tower, and you're not necessarily going to be diving anytime soon with your composition into a virus karma. Lee Sin, it's not going to be happening. That wave that was pushed in earlier by Croco, while there was five man bottling down from Tess, resulted in the tier two mid lane tower. Again, yeah. we keep hitting on the same thing, but the coordination from top esports, the macro on the map has completely been torn apart by AL's movement. Yeah. They're faster, they're smarter. They're actually outplaying top esports on the map right now. And next dragon is coming up. Top esports wish they had some control over that area, but they don't. However, they do have a bunch of wards yeah. that they can TP the Renekton I mean, or Ari onto to try and get a flank. Imagine if they hadn't just super overcommitted on the bottom lane. Maybe they'd have some vision control of the river right now. Like you say, though, those deep wards maybe make it worth it with TPs available for Cream and 369. No universe. Top esports can fight for mid prio here. Cream just desperately trying to clear the way from a distance. Croco 
Looking for the Kronk. Oh my lord, that's a hell of an engage from Kale. And suddenly things look good for Top Esports. They managed to turn around. And 369 wants to be that carry. Hope chased out of the backside of the fight. That's a big old crocodile. And Top Esports, they find control again. AL over push right there and get caught. They overcommit onto Renekton and Renekton bites them back. There's two crocodiles on the rift right now and 369 369's is the strongest one. Top Esports are gonna walk away with three kills. They're taking the Baron as well. They're gonna take so most importantly here as well. So now we can actually see how they can put to use all this pressure. And let's watch this one more time. Croco gets a Q onto the other Croco dial on the map. And this is over commit. Tian's old hits on spot with the Ari charm. They instantly destroy Croco. And then the overcommitment from AL yeah. onto Mako. Jackalov just pulls him out, throws him back out. And four versus five. Top Esports just run you over. I got so excited when I saw Kale's ult, but I was so wrong to do so because, my lord, that was one sided for Top Esports. And well. We could well be going to three games. It feels like Tez are back on the scoreboard. 369 finally gets that carry moment that he has been looking for. And where do we go from here? Cream as well, big damage. And also, TN finally hits the Sichuani ult, and suddenly Top Esports are winning a fight. Who would have known is, that a big old that, single target stun can win a team fight? This might have been the first that hit this game, I'm not sure much, but it sure did make the difference in this particular one. Now, of course, you've got double lanes pushing right here for the side of top esports. You've got Renekton pushing mid, you've got the rest four man on the bot side of the map trying to seed. It is a little bit difficult. A lot of your champions are very short range, especially the Kalista, the Ari. You don't necessarily get to hit the tower for free when there's a Karma right there to perma wave clear together with a, a Nico and a Varus. So, it is very, very difficult for this top esports team to seize towers. They're much better at forcing fights on you and capitalizing on numbers advantage rather than uh, seizing right here. You see how difficult it is. That's the second wave that's pushing and they've been able to take about half that yeah. tower down. And most of that damage, I'm not going to lie to you, has been done by this minion, the, this, this cannon burned up minion. But honestly, for top esports, it's kind of okay. They've still got a full minute of Baron. Even if they're not doing the damage themselves, they are slowly but surely breaking through these in-hip towers. They're like, AL, if they can't clear this wave, they are going to lose this bot in-hip tower. Tien tanking on the front line. That's big damage onto Harry. Forced away, Croco trying to 1v1 369. I'm not sure that's a 1v1 that he um. wins though. 369 pushes him away. Uh, I think Jackilo could just finish this tower without a minion wave. That'll be two inhibs for top esports without even needing a single kill. Yeah, absolutely incredible from top esports. The engage just to create enough space to do damage to that tower to take it down. And of course, Croco trying to get potentially a flank. He was wrapping around. Cream caught. Ooh, the kick does land onto Cream. Hostile takeover. Kind of denies the follow up. Cream survives. That's the important thing. AL lose two in hips and get nothing in return. Yeah, they don't really have necessarily anything going on for them. The Karma is sort of there to wave clear, facilitate for the Lee Sin. Hope right now is not on an on-hit champion. He's playing more of the Lethality Vowers, which relies a lot on the, on the poke. But if you stand still to try and poke them, the Renekton is jumping you, and then you've got Ari jumping on you, and Satsumani jumping on you. It becomes a little bit more difficult for Hope to play this particular game. And of course, the Cassante has fallen an entire item behind to the Renekton level 17 for 369 on the map right now. And even though he had a few overforced skirmishes on the map, currently 3, 2, and 4, 4 items in level 17, yeah. he's absolutely ruling the map. Every single Q Kroko takes onto him, 369 just trades his entire HP bar. Yeah, 369 is an absolute monster right now. Same for Cream as well, level 17. And you can see 4.2 thousand gold from that Baron, a 6k gold lead. There we go, another ult lands from TN. Big damage, 
It's turned back on to Tien, though. He's maybe overcommitted. Croco goes in to try and finish it. Bailout in play, but it's not enough. And AL, maybe this is the moment. But Cream is looking to sweep things up. The all out is actually going to take Harry out of position. And now 369 just wanders under the tower. What looks like a pick for AL. Wait, Jackie Love is taking that fight. The man's insane, but it works out anyway. 15 to 11, and Tess go even in the series. Top Esports finally managed to pick up this victory. It looked grim at the beginning, man. So I'm not gonna lie to you. 369 was not there. But he manages to enter the fight and they turn it around, equalizing the score versus AL. My God. <sighs> Nothing but clean. Nothing but clean. There, there have been so many sighs. There have been so many question marks this series. Yeah. AL should definitely be proud of themselves because they are bringing the fire, they are bringing the fight towards top esports and you can't say this about a lot of teams they're playing with no fear nameplates no. are completely off from the side of al and i'm loving this because they're putting top esports on the spot top esports have to find the answers to come back into the game they didn't in game one they figured it out in game two fantastic stuff from top esports but like you say al they are showing up today and they are pushing top esports to the brink we'll see how this saga ends after this break